Hello and welcome to the August edition of Ask Loading Ready Run. My name is Adam and I am joined this month by Kathleen. It's me. And Ian. It's your boy. And before we start answering all your questions, uh, I got to do a couple things. We got to plug our Patreon at patreon.com slash loading ready run. This is your responsibility uh, with your support. This is why we can do stuff like this. But also we can do the stuff like this because you put in questions, which you can find on our YouTube community page. Uh, every month we take a handful of questions that are submitted and we answer them on the show. So I'm very excited to start. I don't know about you two. I love yeah, this I show. <laughs> I like so, so you, this. Since so you were saying that the, the patrons or the YouTube members themselves, they, they're the Uncle Ben. And yeah. the questions, I guess, <laughs> are the Aunt May of the situation? Because yeah, exactly. we are the spider's men. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. Wait, if they're Uncle Ben, that means they have to die. Uh, that's that's called expiring, it's, and that's why you need to maintain your subscription. It's the little, it's the little death of just giving us a little bit of money every month. <laughs> <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> you two are so great. great to be back. You two are the <laughs> best. Aww. All right. So our first question: uh, Do you have a favorite book or a favorite series of books? This is such a good question for you, Adam. Yeah, I I like to read. Um, I have a my favorite author is an author named Joe Abercrombie. I love him very much, hmm. and uh, he writes mostly uh, very violent <laughs> fantasy books. Um, but they're like all of the characters are like a, a shade of gray, you know, even like the main characters and stuff like that. So. I'm actually just re-listening to um, the audio because like he has the same person that reads all of his books. So he does voices for all the characters and it's like a persistent oh. universe. So Ooh. now anytime I read his books, I hear his voice, like the way he does the voices and That's stuff. That's amazing. Yeah. And he did this book called um, Best Served Cold, which is essentially just a revenge story, but it's about like this, this woman who's a very famous mercenary general and her and her brother get betrayed. Like her brother gets killed and then she gets like left, like thrown off a balcony basically and left for dead. And she ends up recovering and she puts together a motley crew of like assassins and poisoners to kill everybody that was in the room when her brother died. Basically. Yeah. It's very Holy good. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> I'm just re-listening to it now. It's very good. Wow. That's yeah. weird. That's really cool. Yeah. How about I, you, I, I, or, go, go ahead, Kathleen, please. Yeah. Oh, um, so uh, I do a lot of creative writing. I don't read fiction books for fun. I like nonfiction books. So I'm going to say my favorite author is Bill Bryson because he does, he's done a whole series of books on like the history of household objects. And like he's done a, a book called the short history of everything. He's done a book on the English language. He's done several hilarious travel books about like Australia and England. And he's just got an amazing way of displaying information. And I really think if you're looking for a nonfiction book that will teach you so many facts, but also be easy to read and enjoyable and just, you know, like just hearing it from like an old friend who's just so excited to tell you things that you should really check out anything that Bill Bryson has written. Just pick a subject that interests you. I haven't read every single one of his books, but every one I've read has been a delight. And I've reread the one on the English language about three times because it's so full of delightful facts. I've never heard of him. I'm going to have to check <gasps> this I, out. Yeah, you know, you, you, <laughs> sounds you great. Yeah. In, in fact, the audiobooks of them are fantastic. Oh, really? I, oh, I, 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 I did the, uh, the the History of Everything is an audiobook and it was a fantastic read. Huh. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. I, like, I, I, I do audiobooks because I don't have a lot of time to just sit down and dedicate to reading. So it's nice to be able to do uh reading on the go Washing and actually the dishes. i'm putting my foot down <laughs> audiobooks are reading you okay. and me adam are on exactly the same page yeah. audiobooks are. are reading stop feeling bad <laughs> yeah and, and if they're not reading well then you tell that to a blind person that's yeah. not reading yeah yeah, oh. yeah exactly yeah, yeah. that's that, that said I, I i stumbled if you'd asked me this question two years ago it would have been the the robotech series from jack mckinney mm -hmm. but no longer uh, last year, I stumbled upon the three-body problem by, mm. uh, I want to get this right, uh, 
Yo Sishin, uh, and it is holy moly. I love science fiction, and mm -hmm. I, I, I I get a feeling that there's a lot of people in Lord of Run, Ready Run who like science fiction, and a lot of our fans who do as well. Uh, but what we've come to understand uh, science fiction as is a very, very Western interpretation. And mm. this is a book from a Chinese author, from a Chinese perspective. And my God, does it give you a different look into the idea of what science fiction can, like, you've never read a book like this before as a science fiction. It's, 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 it's all about a, uh, a series of, I wanna say first contact with an alien uh, civilization but they are very far away. And uh, it turns out it's going to take them about, mm, let's say, 200 years to get to Earth. Wow. Hmm. But we just noticed that they are coming. And light travels at a certain speed, and they can't move faster than light, but they can move pretty close to the speed of light. <laughs> And just the idea of communication with another civilization, the idea of what it means to be uh, to, to be in a universe that is full of other living beings, and the answer to the question of why haven't we heard anyone? Well, it's the idea of the second book in the series is called The Dark Forest, and it presents this theory of, of a dark forest theory of uh, galactic civilization. That if, 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 if we live in a, uh, in a society of scarcity, then any species that is able to move beyond their own planet and require resources outside of their own system means that they now need resources outside. Mm. So if you are a, okay. a species that exists in the universe, you have to, have to hide as well as possible to avoid any sort of notice from other species. Because those species that have shown themselves to exist are cleansing the galaxy of other races. Oh, oh. that's cool. And, and we've been yeah. sitting here like numpties broadcasting yeah. radio signals for, yeah. you know, a hundred years. Doop -a -doop -a -doop. Look yeah, at us, we're dumb. And that's kind of it. It's like, yeah. what the hell are they doing? Don't they understand what they're, they're just painting a target on their back? Yeah, that's and cool. So they, it's, it's a fascinating book. It's a great, uh, great audio read or just a regular read. I highly recommend huh. it to everyone. Just there's another alien species come and save us and preserve us because we're stupid and we need to be left alone. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely not. Oh, good. good. We, humanity saves themselves through their own, and the universe, through their own ingenuity over the course of thousands of years. Oh, It's called what a The good Three story. Body Problem? The Three Body Problem. Okay. Yeah. I'll have to check it out. I tried reading, oh. I remember a while ago, I'm not a huge science fiction person, but I tried reading um, Ancillary Justice. Hmm. A book called Don't Ancillary Justice, and it was like about like a AI that went that was created to like help humans, but then ended up like kind of going rogue. I don't know. It was mm -hmm. a lot. It was like I've never had a book made me feel so stupid. <laughs> I was like, oh, I feel like a dummy. I can't understand <laughs> what's going on right now. So I find that science fiction does that to me more than just like fantasy, where fantasy is just like sword. <laughs> you know, like here's the sword, yeah. and you're like, ah, excellent. Thanks. Nice, I understand. Yeah. The nice but thing you, about three bodies is it, it, it lays it out for you. It's like you you've never thought about these questions before because mm -hmm. no one has. So mm -hmm. here's what you need to understand. Okay. Excellent. That sounds great. Yeah, that sounds actually awesome. I might have to check that out. And also, I can't Bill wait Bryson. to talk to you about this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next, Ian. Oh, since yes. Road Quest, have you gotten a new vehicle? It's a three-part question. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, let's let's make it easy and dust that right off the top. Yeah, since right. Road Quest, uh, I, I wanted to keep Sabine, but couldn't, mm -hmm. and uh, then lost my Mazda three to a uh, to an accident that was rode off, and uh, that gave me a good chunk of change. Thank you, ICBC. It mm -hmm. was enough to cover the cost of importing a Austin Mini from Japan. That is my pride and joy. I <laughs> love my Mini. I had no idea you drove an Austin Mini. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got to get you into this car, Adam. You'll fit. You'll oh, yeah. absolutely fit. Well, I, okay. It's that's, a classic. It's yeah. like one of the old ones when they were actually like very Mini. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, Good cool. mileage. Lots of fun. Cool car. And uh, yeah, that's my new car. Huh. You Thanks drove that to question. Calgary and back, didn't you? I've driven it to Lethbridge and back twice now. 
Wow. Once, once by choice and once by emergency. How yeah. was it to take on a long road trip? Surprisingly, uh, surprisingly comfortable. It's it, it you can hit highway speeds. You're not going to mm -hmm. be cruising at 130 for too long, but mm -hmm. uh, you can hit 120 pretty easily. You can definitely cruise at 100 for no problem. And because it's a Japanese model and was built in 1998, it has air conditioning, which most <sighs> minis don't. That's pretty Which sick, is yeah. essential Fancy. when you're driving through central British Columbia midsummer. Yes. Mm -hmm. I was just there. Yeah. My mom lives in Penticton. So oh, sweet. It's very warm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just a big, it's like a, it's just a cauldron, right? Like it's just like you're in the, the very bottom of this very hot soup. Oh, the it's armpit of Western Canada. <laughs> yeah, essentially. <laughs> uh, next up, Kathleen. Since mm. PAX Online 2020, have you gotten a new chair? Why, yes, I have. We got a human scale sponsorship and I'm sitting in it and it yeah. is, and at some point so I'll have that. an affiliate code. Use mm. mine. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, this is literally the most comfortable chair I've ever owned. I'm currently sitting in a cushion, but not because the chair is bad for me. It's just mm -hmm. because the camera is really tall because Graham is enormous. He's yes. very tall and I am very short in the torso. <laughs> so... <laughs> I'm wee. Like if I didn't have a, a pillow, I'd be like here. Yeah. Uh, so, but yeah, it's a great chair. It's got a uh, lumbar support and a headrest and you can put arms on it and the yeah. arms can go up and down a little bit. And like, yeah, it's just, is very good. It's a very nice chair. My spine weeps for the luxury it has never known before. Yeah. <laughs> I was like for years, I was in a, uh, like Ikea $50 chair forever. Mm -hmm. And now I got this human scale one and I'm just like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> not, not, to toot, not to toot the human scale horn too much, but uh, the best part is you're working your core while you sit in them because the backs are lift, are supported by your own personal weight. Oh. Oh. So it's good for your tummy tum too. Yeah. Which is yes. Like, my tum tum. And, well, right. and having a strong core gives you a strong back. Yes, it does. Yeah. Um, and having a strong back means your back doesn't hurt. Do you think that perhaps if you spend enough time sitting in a human scale chair, you would do the equivalent of some sit-ups? Probably a sum, a non-zero amount. Like 10? I, I think I'm living proof. <laughs> Has your stomach gotten flatter? That's a real question. <laughs> That's a good question. Okay. I don't know. I'm gonna Actually, to, yes. I'm going to have to keep an eye on it. <laughs> I don't know how you could possibly give a better endorsement than that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then finally, for me, uh, Adam, since you have joined Let's Know, have you been seeing keys everywhere you go in real life? Yes, because everything is just a different form of key. <laughs> really? Yep. When you bake a cake, that's just a key, right? You know? Yeah, I used, I, I used to remember being a kid and thinking like, you know, I'm going to grow up and I'm going to get responsibilities and I'm going to get keys. Yeah. Because keys are a sign of responsibility. <laughs> mm. <laughs> that means you've and, made it. Yeah. And you know what I found? What's that? The true people who have made it yeah. are the people who get to carry no keys at all. True. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, actually. <laughs> Damn, I didn't think about it like that. Mm -hmm. They're too <laughs> important to have to actually go and open a door. Yeah. The door is already open when they show doors. up. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> That's wild. Yeah. I mean, like, I've always had this thing where uh, I like the idea of if I ever hit it rich and I make a ton of money, then my house, I'm just going to make a Resident Evil house, you know? Ooh. And you just need a bunch of keys to get around. Like, but like weird keys, <gasps> mm -hmm. right? Like, mm -hmm, if mm -hmm. you want to use the bathroom, there's like a tiger statue in front of the door and you got to find the two jeweled eyes that go inside it. <laughs> Yeah. You know, stuff like that. Just all the different kinds of keys that you can manage. You should have like RFID chips hidden in interesting places. So like if people like picks things up, like yeah. it'll like trigger something moving very far away to freak them out. <laughs> I, just, oh I, just, I just expected Hold one, up, one day to write have, some stuff down. Yeah. <laughs> one of these days <laughs> you're going to have important. house guests and you're just, you're just going to stand in the entrance to the kitchen, just blocking the way out. Like not move until I get an ice cream sandwich in this mouth. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Better find the key. I can't wait till your house shows up on some sort of cursed Zillow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really, it's just a ploy to get on MTV Cribs, really. You know? Yeah. Clearly, clearly, clearly. All right. And next up, what's the most surprising thing that has come about from these 17 months of March? 
aka the pandemic for either you personally or the world in general hmm. good question i actually have had this conversation twice in the last week with two different people i've come to the really? realization that uh this pandemic was a lot harder <laughs> than i gave it credit for you know yeah. i um as a self-proclaimed introvert um, I am not as introverted as I thought I was. <laughs> um, it's been especially tough because last year, like I don't have a partner and I don't have any pets. So the last mm -hmm. year and a half has been very hard because um, I didn't realize how much stock I put in the loading ready run office. Because mm -hmm. when we would go there to work, um, there was always people there always at least like anywhere from like three to six you know like generally speaking and that got taken away and i realized that i actually like because pre-pandemic i spent all of my energy trying to avoid social situations you know what i mean and now i've mm -hmm. been given oh, yeah. i was given the perfect excuse to never have i was like this is at first i was like this is great right like i don't i don't have any social obligations because of the pandemic. But then I realized I was like, well, no, you're not as, <laughs> you know, like you lost this thing that you really like and you didn't know how much it meant to you until, I mean, they, that's that classic saying where it's like, you don't know how much something means to you until it's gone kind of thing. And man, losing that, the lure office has been much larger, you know, <laughs> it's nice to know that like, I, I mean, it's been a nice realization, right? It's like, I like people, right? Like I don't, I don't particularly like being alone as much as I thought, but it's also made like my ability to uh, converse with people. And like, I've gotten better at just like wanting to be social, mm. right? It's mm -hmm. made me just like much more comfortable talking to people and just being more upfront with, actually it's made me a lot more upfront with just communicating with people because I know now like, oh, I want to have this friendship or this situation. So it's just made me more open to be like, this is how I feel or like, you know, or this is what I want out of this friendship. It, it sounds like it's, it's, it's giving you a lot more agency actually. Yes. In, in, in the sense that, 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 you know, you, 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 you may still want to be, or you may have in, in introvert tendencies. Mm -hmm but it's you want that on your terms yes and 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 that allows you to realize the reverse of it too that you can now want yeah connection yeah. on your terms yeah it's now it's yeah. it's essentially like you put me <laughs> the pandemic put me at like the introvert buffet and i just gorged myself you know for like a year and then i realized <laughs> oh no i'm full <laughs> <laughs> like I've, had, I've had too much alone time i'm full i don't need any more so it's nice to know your limits right yeah uh, how um, about you two you know, I, I can respond to that directly actually mm -hmm. and and kind of take it in a different direction but still the same i i did get to gorge on that that uh that, that introversion and finally uh, realize how much of my interactions with people is due to obligation and be able to make that separation. Like, am I seeing someone because I have to go out and see people or because I want to go and see people? Mm -hmm. I, I lived in Japan for two and a half years. I'm, I'm, I'm well used to not being able to see people. I call my friends for long stretches of time and, uh, and communicate them with them only via electronic means. Mm. Uh, I mean, I, I still had friends there as well, but the people I would consider lifelong friends, like Beach and Heather, I had to talk to via by, via Skype. And so, now having everyone else in that same boat and not having to have the obligation style uh, interactions has made my life a lot less stressful. And I'm I'm, I'm hoping to uh, to again approach the world on my own terms uh, when we eventually get the point to. Uh, get back mm. um ah there's a loud motorcycle it wasn't that bad too <laughs> um i uh so my like i would say most formative friending that i think i did was um 
when I was uh, just starting university and I joined the Dumbrella message boards. Mm -hmm. So I have a long history of like having, of like forming deep and intimate friendships with people through text-based mediums. So I've been spending a lot of time in Slack this pandemic and it's fine. Like I like, you know, it's old hat, but what the pandemic has taught me is that, um, so mental illness runs in my family and my mother in particular has a lot of paranoia about germs. Mm -hmm and about getting sick uh and uh so uh imagine my unpleasant surprise as to be thrust into the real life situation of which my mother made my life a living hell growing up mm -hmm. because she has some really paranoid issues with that and i have a lot of anxiety right so you know having to actually confront that about myself and be like no you will not fall down this rabbit hole and ruin other people's lives and ruin the life of those you care about the most because i'm sure my mother didn't start out trying to make <laughs> our lives horrible mm -hmm. right i'm sure that was all mental illness uh you know really my mental health is poor and lack of socialization and seeing people in person is definitely part of it um i feel like my actual social skills have atrophied i'm so rusty at being around other humans mm -hmm. um but i am proud of myself for uh you know basically i could feel myself creeping over the edge of extreme paranoia about like how many times i would have to sanitize my hands and like all of these things and i was just like all right well you gotta fucking walk yourself back you gotta iron will yourself out of this and i have managed to do it like I will still sanitize my hands after I touch a public doorknob and of a, if I'm going to touch my phone because I know I touch my phone in bed and while I'm on the toilet because I'm a disgusting monster. Hey, I do uh, it too. It's okay. Don't worry. Yeah. This is but, safe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's safe. I dropped my phone on the toilet recently. So that's cool. <laughs> But just like, you know, I just have like, it's been, it's been just like one continual like brain flex for me not to go insane during this awful pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, so my brain is, feels like I've done a thousand crunches. Yeah. Um, oh, I think that's, it's that's all of exhausting. us. I don't know if it, it helps, but I think that's a normal thing. People I've talked to, it feels the same way, right? Like mm. we're all just kind of, it doesn't, it's just like, it's wild, right? Like it doesn't feel real. Why should you know? it be this hard to to not have to uh, go to the office and wear pajama pants while recording a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> I love you so much. <laughs> oh man, oh, yeah, it's just been hard for everyone, you know. And I know that we're all used to hearing like it's okay for it to be hard, but like it didn't really hit me right like i would hear stuff people say stuff like that and i'm like yeah it was difficult but then even the last month or so i'm just like that was really hard you know just hard we've, we've got to keep saying it because we it's been two and a what one and a, one and a half it's been a long time yeah longer than any of us thought it was going to be yeah and it's still not over and yeah we need to hear that that answer it's, it's okay yeah yeah it's okay it's there's not going to be any single day when they're like, "Hey, pandemic's done." Yeah, it's yeah. just gonna it's gonna slowly fade into the background. Mm -hmm. right? There's no ticker tape parade. Yeah. No, if five years from now we're gonna be like, "Wow, remember when COVID was like a total thing and it was just so awful, yeah. right?" But it's gonna just slowly drop off. Yeah. Yeah, like just think for a second how many people you know refuse to update their iphones to the most recent os <laughs> and <laughs> apply that to the number of people who are still going to be taking their time coming back out of their yeah. out of their shell mm -hmm. we're going to need that yeah it's yeah. going to take some time mm -hmm. yeah. all right ian oh why should well, adam and kathleen play yakuza well speaking of things that are going to take some time i would hope <laughs> that the two of you would take some time to get into one of my favorite uh one of my favorite series of games yeah and uh i think i can finally say definitively to both of you uh that yeah you should both play yakuza mm -hmm. they're no longer beat em up games they're now uh, a j turn-based jrpgs with mm -hmm. all that that has to go with it but it still keeps everything else that i love about the series so for you adam yeah. I would suggest you need to play Yakuza because it's full of these just 
over the top bombastic characters with yeah. uh, lovely power levels and let's be honest uh there is no other game series out there that takes advantage of their connection with new japan pro wrestling uh, so seriously you're and playing so to the deeply. judges now yeah <laughs> you know, this is why, why should adam watch well yeah exactly for that reason yeah i've heard they're very goofy i've been wanting they're to check it out yeah they they, they they that's the thing they swing from goofy yeah all the way over to like i have cried a yeah. couple times okay yeah, in yeah. this past game and then right back again yeah but never in a way that makes you think that takes you out of things it's uh it's it's just beautiful stories and for kathleen it's that same idea of uh of getting to access uh spending time in japan spending time with well-written well-developed characters whose motivations are completely uh, outlined and uh may sometimes be hidden and can be discovered through different sub stories and conversations like i've hey, business management there's so much to these games that that uh that, that would appeal and i hope that you get a chance to check them out because i just want to talk with you both about them <laughs> how violent is it yeah that's unfortunate <laughs> violence very much but yeah. like cartoon violence is okay yeah oh oh well then the violence is so completely cartoony over the top kathleen when i'm in battle i have the option to flip open my cell phone and call my good friend nanshi who by the way is a crustacean uh she she, she is a literal actual just straight up uh crawfish <laughs> <laughs> and she'll come in and, and, and deal with my enemy like a for big me. crawfish or like no, just no, an actual tiny, crawfish? A regular just, yeah oh, that's, that's really <laughs> I'm funny i'm listening this seems right up my alley oh, oh yeah and it's, sold me on it and it gets an in an entrance like any other uh top level yakuza boss oh really oh, oh okay yeah. yeah all right all right all right and by the way <laughs> I get to use that person in my battles because I saved them from being eaten through a heartwarming sub, uh, side story. Oh. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. That sounds you know, like fun. You know, Ian, you got me. Okay. I, hope so. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. I found during the pandemic that I use cooking meditatively as a way to de-stress after work. One way I did this was by finding recipes my partner wanted and tried to learn it and perfect it. Have you guys done this or what is something unique that is cooking slash baking related that you've tried out recently? I am not much of a cooker. So mm. this one is, I don't think this one's for me. Uh, Do it. Yeah, go go ahead, Kathleen. Let's. Uh... Oh, I was gonna say, Ian, do you want to go first? <laughs> You've got something right off the top of your head. Sure, I, I actually do have it right here. I didn't want to step over top because I had to talk about yakuza for a while, but <laughs> I've been working with sandwiches recently, mm -hmm. and I I, I I don't know if it's true for everyone else, but it was certainly true for me that I thought I was good at making sandwiches. I thought, oh yeah, you know what? I'll put a you know good amount of peanut butter and some good butter on some good bread. Oh, maybe uh, three slices of meat and, uh, and, a, and a sliced tomato if I'm feeling kicky. No, 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 no. First of all, we need to get good. Like, it's worth spending the money on the Portofino bread if you're going to be eating a sandwich. Their bread is really good, isn't it? I've never yeah. had it. It's oh, really, it's like it's irritatingly worth it. <laughs> and it's like, it's like it, making it, it, you it, mad. You're just like, this bread is delicious. It's so it, good. It's oh. more expensive than normal bread. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Noticeably mm -hmm. so, but oh, not... Yeah but not too much it's it, it's like it's yeah. on it's it's on the edge of luxury but it's not like the full p level expensive bread which you mm -hmm. just have to eat so quickly but it's delicious but it's just like oh i better use it in the two days before it turns like portofino mm. keeps a while so like, yeah it's, it's a splurge and but it's yeah. kind of like a cake it's yeah. so good their but white see, bread is so good for french toast by the way that is like oh, a pandemic I'll have thing to try that oh my god I, i've been i've been doing marble rye recently oh but i've kind of settled on but you do that you get a good pastrami from your uh for, or any any meats like i've 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 done good work with costco deli meats honestly mm -hmm. what changed the game for me mm -hmm. were a couple of things and that was for me muffaletta which is a uh a chopped olives and uh a pickled you know tiny bits of carrots celery it's it's a sandwich a pickled sandwich topping in oil 
Mm. And I put that down on top of the, on top of the mustard. So you got bread, butter, mustard, uh, muffaletta, then your cheese and your meats. Then, uh, for me, I'll do slice, thin sliced tomato. Gotta be nice and thin, but gotta be fresh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then some lettuce on top. And the lettuce actually makes a big, uh, more of a difference than you'd expect it to. That extra crunch, that extra bit of a, uh, just a little bit of bitterness. Oh yeah. And some sliced onion. Mm. Now here is the key. Wrap your sandwich. What do you mean? For the first few months that I started getting good at sandwiches, I made some pretty nice sandwiches and I made them, you know, standard, put the sandwich together, push it a bit, cut it in half and triangles. Great. Looks beautiful. Then I took to taking some, I want to say parchment paper. Yeah. Parchment paper is what I've been using and wrapping the sandwich in that, tucking the corners in underneath, flattening it down and then letting the whole thing sit for a half an hour. Mm. And that sounds crazy, mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, but that gives you all the time that your sandwich needs for the flavors to mingle and marinate. You know, that uh, oil from the muffaletta is coming out. The, uh, the butter is mixing into the bread. Everything's compressed just a bit by that, uh, by that sandwich wrap. And so it's not getting a chance to flop all over. Everything's in tight contact with each other. You cut it in half. First of all, the wrap means that nothing's falling out. It's all contained. Yeah. And then it looks great. It tastes great. It's the best sandwich I have ever had outside of my home or in wow damn ian for, can i just add from a food science point of view the other reason you should always let your food sit out uh or uh if you if you're just going to eat it not reheated is because cold food is cold and cold things inhibit the flow of mm -hmm. like matter essentially mm -hmm. molecules move around less and you know what those molecules have flavor Yep. Your food will be more flavorful if it comes up to room temperature. And of course, you're going to keep your meat and your cheese in the fridge, so it's going to be cold. Like, obviously, it still tastes fine when it's cold, <laughs> but like you're able to enjoy the aromas better of a room temperature sandwich. And you're not going to get sick from leaving your temperature sandwich out for half an yeah. hour. You because, can just leave it out for four hours, honestly. I didn't, even, I didn't even think about that. I would never because, would have thought of that, but that's uh, that's very smart. That just makes sense. <laughs> well, that's that's oh. what your mother did when they, when they made you sandwiches in your, in your school days. Yeah. They got put in the bag but it was a ziploc bag it was never uh, properly wrapped i'm yeah. guessing where i got the idea from was the chopped cheese which uh check out kenji's chopped cheese on youtube it's mm. uh hamburger meat uh with with uh fried onions mm. uh you layer two pieces of uh of processed cheese on top of it let it melt in you put it on a crusty bun mm -hmm. and then again this was the key that i hadn't thought of and he laid it out to me, wrap it in foil mm. and let it sit. And again, the foil keeps, lets things cook more, lets things mingle more. Yeah. It's why takeout food is general, generally seems more delicious than anything you cook at home is because they're wrapping it up and you're letting it sit. Mm. Huh? I never thought about that. That makes sense. I'm going to make a sandwich this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm thinking about it now. I want I'm excited to see. on rice so bad. Oh my oh. god, yes. Let me tell you, I want to make I want to make sandwiches for all of you, quite literally, because I am so some proud of these things I've been eating. We sauerkraut oh, fans. Yeah, sauerkraut. Ooh, yes, absolutely yes. some sauerkraut in there. <laughs> the yeah. acid is really important for balancing the flavors, yeah. actually. Yeah, and yeah. like, you know, oh. pickles and all those sort of things are so good on sandwiches. Just thinly sliced. You don't need a lot, but yeah. it just really it, the tanginess sets things up. Oh, I'm a big time pickle fan. I love pickles. <laughs> oh, baby. Now I'm Spring just for the sliced <laughs> Spring for those sliced pickles. Yeah. It's worth the extra. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, what did you, did you have anything that came up to you uh, over the pandemic for cooking? Oh, yes. Um, so uh, I have a daughter and she's great and I love her. And what children love is Penelope is my daughter because she loves brunch. She loves the idea of brunch. <laughs> and she decided she likes pancakes. I hate pancakes because have you ever gotten a pancake at a restaurant? And it's just like this huge doughy flavorless thing oh. that's like heavy and bland 
or it's like it's like fluffy but it has basically no flavor it just tastes like butter and syrup it's a right? brown it's a brown manhole cover yeah they're yeah. terrible i hate pancakes not even the famous red velvet pancakes at um our uh, whatever th jam that everybody lines up for because it tastes like chocolate cake that I then put butter and syrup on. Yeah, which is yeah. like I don't like pancakes, so I like surely there has to be a way to make pancakes that I will enjoy them because my daughter loves pancakes and if I have to eat another of these fucking baking powder pieces of shit, I'll <laughs> go insane. Wow. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> Real talks coming out here. Yeah, it's been a long pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> But anyhow, I found out the best way to make pancakes, which is to throw away your baking soda and know that you've been lied to and start mm. making yeast raised pancakes, baby. Mm. You leaven them and they're incredible and it's easy. It doesn't take that long. It takes 90 minutes, which I argue if you're having brunch is fine because yeah. you're going to mm -hmm. have very good. You're okay. So yeast raised pancakes are not sweet. They don't they they have a like two tablespoons of sugar in them. So they're a little bit sweet, but you need something to kickstart the yeast. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but what you do is you just make a very loose dough and then you add and uh, or it's like a batter essentially. And you just let it sit covered for 90 minutes and it puffs up and it doubles in size and they are light and they are fluffy, but they have a little bit of like actual bread tang, not Ooh. a lot. Mm -hmm. Right. It, they're not like sourdough but you can taste the yeast so it's not just this bland awful thing it's got its own flavor that is complemented by the butter and the syrup or fruit oh to that end i mean like 90 minutes is enough time to put together some mimosas maybe some uh bechamel sauce or a uh, or an eggs benedict you know what's mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. funny you two talk about food how i talk about wrestling <laughs> 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 that's good yeah i can feel yep. i can feel it man i just like oh that is your we caught a God, question that... that got both of you in your cores you know yeah. is that elton brown's music oh you two just got me all excited about cooking mm. come over and i'll make you pancakes Adam. <laughs> oh my god yes change please. your life yeah <laughs> All right, oh. next up, what's something you feel like you found out or realized unusually late? Any weird myths from childhood you didn't revisit until your 30s? I have one right off the top of the dome. Uh, for, the, me. for the longest time, and I found this out a, a while ago, like probably like six years ago or so, probably when I first started streaming because I said it's something out loud, right? I thought legit that dinosaurs' brains were in their thighs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, 100% believed it, thought that that mm -hmm. was real. Because I think they taught it in school. I'm pretty sure that they told me that the dinosaur brain was just right in their leg, and that was it. And that's why they all died, because they were idiots. They had tiny <laughs> brains in their thighs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I was like 20. I was probably like, yeah, I was like 28 or 29, you know, when I found out the opposite but yeah forever i just thought dinosaurs brains were in their thighs adam i think i know exactly what picture you're referencing yeah, to because like I, I remember this he's a brontosaurus yeah. like my main head, brain is up in the head but yeah. there's also this other brain right yeah. in the thigh. Yeah. yeah the butt brain yeah because <laughs> they needed more brain to it was control a grown, their tails i was a grown-ass adult to... oh no <laughs> uh. schools are the worst yeah I'm trying to think if there's anything else recently. No, not that I can think of off the top of my head. But that one will stick with me forever. Yeah. <laughs> you two got anything or no? Oh, that's yeah. a tough one. No. Uh, I can go ahead if you're if, if you're if you're uh, thinking out loud there, Kathleen. It's... I I have a very glib joke. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's kind of true. I just, I realized how stupid I was when I got older. <laughs> we were all idiots. It's okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, but like, to, like, to be fair, I have, <laughs> like, to truly come across my own, to, I have confronted my own cognitive biases yeah. because I am very paper smart because I have an incredibly good memory for random facts and crap if I apply it. Mm -hmm. um, I've but, watched you like, play trivia. <laughs> But my actual, like, deep understanding of, like, human motivation is so lacking, <laughs> right? Just to realize how dumb I am at, like, many things to do with interpersonal interaction. Yeah. So that was kind of fun. But... Yeah. 
Ian? Hey, guess what, kids? Uh, <laughs> when you get older, you're not going to get more conservative. You don't have to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a lie. It's so true. Yeah. You're allowed to keep your heart and still feel for other human beings and want more for yourself and for your fellow man. Yeah. Don't stop that. Don't get hard-hearted. No. The more, the more I've participated in the system, the more I realize it's stupid and it's broken oh. and it needs to be completely torn down. Mm -hmm. I was the most conservative capitalist kid in when I was 12. You know, like suits and ties and, <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and progressive conservatives. And you know what? I don't need that. That's fucking cool. <laughs> That's so cool. I, I wish more people would know. We would just... Would yeah. Just, I guess, yeah. I mean, in that vein of things, like, I mean, I'm a big, like, mental health person. And I've taken more to, like... Because like, when I was younger, I got picked on a lot. But I got picked on a lot because I cried easy. I was a kid mm -hmm. who cried easy, Aww. right? And that's just, like... That's game over, right? Like that's just like kids are sharks <laughs> for the yeah. most part. And when they find like a, they find one that's like, oh, he cries easy. Let's get him. But as I get Smell tears, yeah. As I get older, I'm like, I'm getting more comfortable with just like, hey, crying's okay, right? You just need to do it every once in a while. Like it's okay, <laughs> it's fine. It doesn't change <laughs> anything, right? Yeah, it's just like that's the one one of the bigger things. I'm just like, yeah, it's okay. Like it doesn't. Everybody does it. Mm -hmm. it means you're mm -hmm. capable of feeling things yeah. and mm -hmm. the more i look around these days that's uh that's it's a uh, yeah. vanishing quality. I, I don't know if it's a product of the the pandemic i mean you know, I, I i i would assume it's it's been catalyzed by it but i'll cry like <laughs> over seemingly like something to very innocuous and i'm just like <laughs> i think I, my body just needed that right and, like you know what i mean like it's just like one little thing goes wrong and it's just like <laughs> you know, but I think my body is just like, you just need to get it out, you know, every once in a while. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. some days you just finish the last Maiden Abyss movie. Yeah. That one was so good. I loved yeah. it so much. Yeah, it was great. I thought it was awesome. Oh my God, I love that movie. Yeah. <laughs> Watch the Maiden Abyss movies as long as you're okay with feeling sad. Yeah, there's a lot. Because there's a lot, a lot, lot there. there. Yeah, there's a lot of content warnings on those ones. What's up? All right. I've learned recently that not everyone prefers listening to deep bass voices. When it comes to stuff like audiobooks, which voice profile do you prefer the reader to have? Mm. I mean, I've been told many times by many different people that my voice is very nice. Uh, I think that's what I prefer as well. It's like, I don't know, I just like a big, bassy, deep voice, <laughs> you know? That just gets me. <laughs> I think I prefer because I, I do love audiobooks, and mm. this one got it kind of just uh, came out of the blue to me. But I think I much prefer audiobooks that are just narrated audio. Like even the voice profile doesn't really matter that much. But please, please don't make voices because. Early on in my audiobook career, one of my favorite authors, Cory Doctorow, was uh, was was doing his own uh, uh, his own narration of his own audiobook. Mm. Then he got to the sex scene, and I don't want to hear my favorite author making love to themselves mm. while making up voices for both sides of the uh, the interaction. Yeah. It's a little weird. No sex for me, please. Thanks. Yeah. No thanks. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Don't need to hear that. Yeah. Uh, Kathleen, oh, do you Harry, have a preference? you Wingardian, my Philippian. <laughs> oh, if I ever write a book, there's going to be no goddamn sex in it. Let me tell you, I can't yeah. think of anything I'd rather write less than a sex scene. Mm -hmm. I support this. Yeah. And romance, you know, you can have very meaningful relationships that aren't sexual. I would argue that I would say like 99% of your meaningful relationships shouldn't be sexual. Mm 
Uh, anyhow, um, I don't know. I don't listen to, I don't, I tend to like read my books because I'm reading nonfiction and so I'll like listen to music and stuff in the background. But I think for like podcast voices, my favorite voice is just, it doesn't necessarily have to be like a bassy voice. I just think it has to be a steady and um, kind voice of any uh, gender expression honestly mm -hmm. you know so not mine because mine goes up and down and is quite squeaky uh but you know somebody who had like you know like a newsreader voice right yeah like a consistent NP voice mm -hmm. you want an npr not so much a uh anything else yeah 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 <laughs> cool all right so this one <laughs> is tailor targeted at one person <laughs> well no ian likes music too but what music have you all been listening to these days any recommendations oh boy oh please boy. Every, other people go ahead uh i i don't really listen to any new music a lot of my musical tastes are trapped in the late 90s early 2000s uh either punk or pop punk or uh some metal a little bit but I love stuff like uh, Thrice and Protest the Hero. There's a band called the Cancer Bats who I enjoy very much. Um, I enjoy pop punk immensely. The more sugary sweet it is, the better, you know? <laughs> and uh, I love stuff like Teenage Bottle Rocket, uh, Set Your Goals. Um, there's a band called Four Year Strong that I really enjoy. And yeah, I just like stuff like that. I just like, I haven't really found anything new that's along those lines, but I haven't really dug that deep into it which i <laughs> oh dear <laughs> yeah yeah so i'm like always always open you know like i just haven't i haven't like in my youth i was always looking for new music and i just kind of fell off that train and even just recently i've been like revisiting all the music that i used to listen to all the time and i'm like man music's good you know like i even like stuff like um frank turner hmm. i love frank turner Frank Turner's great. Um, and stuff like uh, there's a, a band called Hot Water Music, and they did like solo projects. And Chris Wallard has a, his solo project has a, called Chris Wallard and the Ship Thieves. And I really enjoy that album. I think there's only one, maybe there's two albums by them, but I like it when bands like, like especially punk bands go off and do like something completely different, you know, hmm. that's fun to me. I like hearing like them do like a tackle a different style. I think that's kind of like yeah. why I like thrice so much. Cause they kind of, every album, they do something kind of different, you know, a little bit, they try to do some weird stuff sometimes, but yeah, that would be mine. Their own hand. Yeah. <laughs> Over the course of the pandemic, I have had three bands that have loomed large specifically because of the timing around it actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to talk about, uh, just, just uh, mention uh, Sheena Ringo, who I discovered just before the pandemic and had then put out a new album uh, just at the start of the pandemic and then has released a couple other albums and a new album by the Tokyo Incidents, which is her side group. Mm. It's, it's some of the best. I don't know how to describe it because it's rock jazz pop Every, I would love to examine this and do a, a, a deep dive on Sheena Ringo and, and her work because she was actually uh, supposed to be doing the music and all, be involved in a lot of the opening ceremonies for the last Japanese Olympics mm. and then had to leave due to uh, the, the, the people being in charge being complete uh, dick bags but that's neither here nor there so Sheena Ringo cannot mm. recommend highly enough her work uh, she is, yeah, I can't stop thinking about it. <laughs> Official Hige Dandism is mm. the same group uh, that uh, discovered just before the pandemic and released a couple albums, released a couple singles throughout it and has kind of been getting me through. But the one that's still getting me through uh, to this day is uh, Tokyo Scott Paradise Orchestra. I, I, I have heard. no idea how this band has managed to remain relevant fresh and consistently amazing over the years that they've been together like they are they've got to be at least 20 years uh old if not more now it's a long and time. They, they they they've been working 
uh, over the past few years with a lot of Japanese pop and rock artists to do collaborations. And I, 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 I want to mention them specifically because the song Blue Daisy uh, by a, ska, a Tokyo Ska Paradise Orchestra was the last song I listened to in my office cubicle before we were sent home uh, on the pandemic. Mm. And it is a song about being, uh, about saying good morning to a new day and finding beauty in a small flower uh, and stepping, stepping outside of your, your shell and your home into the world, into a new day and finding beauty there. And I've been hanging on to that song since then, because it's like, this is going to be, this is going to be the song for me when we get out of this. Yeah. I'm going to come back to the same song two and a half years later, and it's going to be glorious. That's cute. That's wonderful. I like that. Tokyo Skapara. Wow. Uh, so I have been listening to a lot of music because that is my own personal challenge to myself is to keep up on new music. So I listen to, I listen to so much new music. I listen to like, I don't know, a lot. And I do a stream about it every week. So uh, forget, this will be a long list. But before I get to what I've been listening to, Adam, mm -hmm. I am pleased to report to you that pop punk is officially having a moment. Oh, it's really? Come back into hey. style. Oh, Travis sick. Barker is now one of the most <laughs> yeah. sought after producers in the music. Like he is oh. like basically had a stream of hits. He's worked with some guy named Machine Gun Kelly, who's put out a good pop punk album that I haven't listened to. Okay. Um, Willow Smith uh, did a pop punk album. Okay. Uh, is that the I, Irish Will Smith? It's the the small the the his daughter. Oh uh, really? Oh, oh, yeah. Will Willow Smith, not Will O Smith. No, no. <laughs> You're dumbass, Ian. <laughs> I mean, just don't understand. I went right over my head. Yeah. Uh, I missed it entirely. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. Um, um, this is an important thing, as I think during this music uh, discussion, if anybody is listening to this and being like, I've never heard of any of these bands, who cares? Yeah, Do try them out. Yeah. Who's got time for that? Not you, obviously. Don't feel bad about it. God, there's so much music. You could listen to it all if you tried. Yeah. But you've probably, got a Spotify, you've probably got a Spotify or an Apple Music account, and there is all the music on there. Yeah. 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 And yeah, don't feel bad if you haven't heard of any of this. Anyhow, there's a whole new thing of pop punk. It's coming back into style. I'll do some research and figure out if there's... I'm a poor judge of it because I like music that sounds unhappy. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's fair. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I mean, that sounds, sounds, Yeah, I just... The, oh, man, I love... The sh more sugary, the better. I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, I'm all in, baby. <laughs> oh, I want music that sounds Good. like someone is wallowing in misery. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I like stuff I can clap along to, you know, I just picture myself at the concert and like, if I can clap, that's all I care about, you know, it's fun. Well, more more skip, horn solos. Yeah. Skip all of these suggestions then. Actually, that's not true. <laughs> There's lots of good albums come out that, um, yeah. anyhow. So, uh, whipping through quickly. First of all, there's a band called Tropical Fuckstorm from Australia, or TFS for short, that sounds like a regular band's been put through a mangle and then the recording's been run backwards. It's so sludgy yeah. and like everyone sings slightly off key, but in that perfectly pleasing way. And there's just a lot of that scream singing where it's not like, Rah! it's more like, <laughs> and that just is like my sweet spot. So there's if you- passion. Yeah. Yes, exactly. You can really feel the emoting. That name um, is incredible. Yeah. <laughs> So if you like discordant uh, music that has a lot of screaming in it, um, I recommend it. Mm -hmm. um, and they've got like multiple vocalists. And so there's uh, uh, boy singers and girl singers, if you know that is, uh, it influences your taste. Um, what else has come out recently that I really liked? Um, I'm just literally flipping through my recently added, so this will take a little bit. No, um, no frills just dropped their new, uh, their, their, their new hot uh, album. All in state of mind. Oh. <laughs> if you're interested in uh, commercial based music. Yeah. Um, uh, there's a, a lady named uh, Lingua Ignata, and she makes the heaviest music I've ever heard. It's like extreme metal, and she's done a concept album about like uh, like uh, like religious behavior in like sort of like the Pennsylvania sort of almost like Appalachian adjacent parts of America. And she did a song about that giant fire that's still burning underground after all these years and it never Ooh. gone out. 
and it makes it and there's no screaming in this album but it's devastatingly heavy she's a classically trained vocalist um so that her that album's called sinner get ready and that gives a high recommend from kathleen just for being an amazing listening experience okay sounds like a modern day edmund fitzgerald yeah <laughs> It's uh, it's got a very black metal sensibility, but it doesn't have any of the high pitched screaming, which I really appreciate because yeah, I'm a yeah. delicate lady. Uh, I am. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see what else has been really good that's come out. Um, the new Tyler album is really good. It's very fun to listen to. I really, really like Tyler, the creator. I know some of his earlier stuff is problematic. I just don't listen to that. Mm -hmm. uh, I start with Flower Boy and Go Ford. Okay. Um, but the new album's very, very good and very fun to listen to, despite everything to I just out. said. Yeah. Um, I'm still going. I really apologize. I'm only no, talking about the things I really, really like. Oh, I have. I, I need to go back. OK. Uh, this uh there's a uk band called squid that put out their debut album this year uh that's really great it's it's sort of this angular post-punk like what are we what are we on like wave four of post-punk now yeah. but it's sort of like this angular post-punk squealy guitars kraut rock beats kind of thing lots of screaming once again in the ah, ah, anguish kind of way and the <laughs> not the rah, kind of way yeah, yeah, yeah. you know it's higher pitched um <laughs> uh so and then you listen to this and this band absolutely just goes they do uh, like just every song builds up to this absolutely crashing crescendo of music that just washes over you. You get like frisian from listening to it. It's incredible. Their singer is giving it a hundred percent. Their drummer is just banging away. Like the guitars are just squealing and building up on top of each other. And then when you watch the video, you realize their singer is their drummer. And then you're like, how do you do that? Yeah, yeah that's always blown my mind. When you see that the singer is the drummer, I'm like, how oh. i can barely put my pants on properly oh, <laughs> the rush protocol yeah. oh it's very good so yeah. um oh and king gizzard and the lizard wizards put out like three yeah. albums since we went into quarantine and they're all really good honestly they're all good K king gizzard albums if you like that kind of thing <laughs> i'm amazed that they can continue on with the quality level and keep it up that's yeah. that's commendable that's so, so I, hard I, I do. It's interesting. They put out a double album called KGLW all together. KG came out and then six months later, LW came out. And it's mm -hmm. all like one double album that goes together. Um, and if you're like, I've never heard of, I've never heard this band, but I've heard you talk about them. Where should I start? That's as good as played as that good as place as any. It's like a good sampler of their various styles. It's all done in microtonal tuning. So everything sounds slightly off. Um, but it's got everything from like, you know, sludgy doom metal tracks to like some real like fun dancey bangers. Um, like I actually, um, and, uh, but interestingly, because it was all recorded sort of distantly, you can hear it in the songs. It was not quite as together. It's a little bit like, it's a bummer of an album by their, by their, like, you know, they've made lots of like albums that are about, you know, the earth is going to be destroyed. Climate change is going to ruin us all because they're Australian. So they're kind of plugged into that. Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, but like you can just, there's an, there's an, an angriness to the music that has not previously been there. So you can tell it's a quarantine album. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. I think that's the norm. This probably got to be like a higher percentage of like quarantine albums being like that, right? Like <laughs> a little touchy. <laughs> yeah, a little touchy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, next up, if you're okay, so I think this is the final question. If your co presenters on this episode were household appliances, what would they be and what would be their advertising slogan? Hmm. Mm. See, Ian would be some weird Japanese thing, right? Mm -hmm, Just mm -hmm, easy mm -hmm. answer. Sorry, Ian, you've been typecasted. Bye, Jobu. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Kathleen would be like some like very hip IKEA, not even IKEA, because IKEA is too mainstream, right? Yeah. But you'd be like some weird kind of like niche appliance, you know, something you only kind of like. It's just like it's kind of like with you and the pancakes, right? You threw out the baking soda. Yeah. And you got this cool kind of hip pancake, right? <laughs> you know, like effortlessly, effortless, effortless, effortlessly cool. There, I said Aww. it. I got it. You know, like I'm trying to think what that would be, but I'm picturing it. You know, 
Could could I be one of them countertop composters that like <laughs> yeah. looks like a like a space pod, like a yeah. classy space yeah. pod? Yeah, yeah, yes. There we go. You nailed but, it. But, yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> you're a Miel branded one. Yeah, yeah. But uh, importantly, it reflect it reflects my emotional state because it's just garbage on the inside. <laughs> 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 oh, fuck they got me oh man yes yep you nailed I'm it keep that running there there yeah. adam you in fact are the kitchen knife sharpener all right yeah you, you're allowed you shoot <laughs> out sparks and you keep everyone sharp yeah. oh i like that yeah very i'm a utility player you know yeah <laughs> I mean, I help everything just keep running smooth, right? Mm. Yeah. yeah. And when everyone's sharp, everything works better. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Me too. Uh. <laughs> I, Adam, I see you as a dryer. <laughs> okay. It's okay. Yeah. I'll go on this journey with you. All right. All right. So yeah. not like a new dryer, not yeah. like one of those top of the line ones that plays like some sort of... <laughs> tune and uh probably breaks down uh, six months into the warranty oh, yeah, and then yeah, requires yeah. a special part to come from off island yeah. not one of those yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, i like this conversation this is good you are like a normal ass uh big uh uh you know lots of good features but not like super fancy yeah. and you know what you're reliable you work and you make everything warm and nice <laughs> you're su your support you will you'll always there you never let it down you don't break you oh, get the clothes fuck. dried you're gonna make me cry jesus <laughs> oh, thank you <laughs> like, oh man <laughs> ian you're like the fucking you're like the God, what's the thing from Rick and Morty? They have like the infomercial. It's like the, the Gizlorp or something. It's like some <laughs> weird thing that just like <laughs> only like a very small handful of people really kind of get it. You yeah. know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do that note, Kathleen. I, I, I put you actually in down as an immersion circulator. Oh. <laughs> because you, you're precise and you make some absolutely amazing uh, results that could not be got with any other method. But if you use it wrong, <laughs> boy, oh boy, are things going to turn out badly. Yeah. Hey, wait a second. This question was tricking us into complimenting each other. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all, right. Man. I, all right ian i definitely agree with adam i think you are imported you're an imported yeah. japanese item mm -hmm. uh you are one of uh i feel like you are fabulously expensive but you are absolutely the best at what you do yes but yeah. what is this weird niche thing that you do that you actually can't live without until you realize you have it are you just an excellent bidet <laughs> 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 It's not of the rice cooker, but sure, I'll take the bidet. Well, I just feel like the bidet brings more joy in yeah. unexpected ways. <laughs> true. True. In, true. In, in some ways that may make you question yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm so always so surprised uh, by your sense of humor and delighted that, you know, in the same way that you're like, wow, I was weirded out by this, but now I see the appeal. Yes. It's <laughs> funny. I had that thought like four times this whole <laughs> night. I've been like, wow, man, I kind of, I, I like... Ian's so weird, but he's so great. You know, it's just like he just he just cracks me up. He's just I don't know. He just the way that you like you have an aura, right? Thank you. Yeah, it's great. Th th thank you. <laughs> I, I, re I really feel like if I'm not making my friends co question themselves and their relationship <laughs> with me at any checking out, or I'm not doing my job as a friend. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's hard to keep it sharp. The number of times Ian has said something and my brain immediately goes, Ian, you dumbass. <laughs> Unless. Yeah, wait a second. Yeah, but then I start laughing. So it's just like, I don't know. It's just, that's you. That's mm. just Ian. I need an appliance that does that. Mm. Like, what would you do? What were you doing before this, you idiot? I, I, I think you're thinking of the Amazon Echo, but if it was powered by Siri. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
Oh man. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. That was a good talk. It's, a good time. I'm glad. Mm-hmm. it's like it's nice for me to do these with like people that I never get to really kind of talk to. You know what I mean? Like I could do this with Ben and James and it'd be easy, right? Like I mean it's easy with you two, but it's just like, I don't know, we just talk about whatever. But you two, I never get to like, you know really crack open a nice juicy question with right Mm. it's been nice it's it's really it's been a lot of fun and i think we couldn't do it at all without the people at home submitting those questions so not only your support at loading ready or patreon.com slash loading ready run you give us a little monthly buck or two and it helps us keep the lights on but also on our youtube community page where you can submit questions which we answer every month with a rotating cast from loading ready run and with that I think that's about all we have to say for today. Uh, Once again, my name is Adam. I've been joined by Kathleen and Ian this way. (laughs) There we go. And we will say goodbye. Bye, everybody. Mm